Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, and today is Monday, March 19th, 2018. Uh, we had mentioned last week that we wanted to do a video before the sales at Bonhams this week, uh, but we got thrown way off our schedules due to a couple of blizzards, and we got Christie's and Sotheby's done, um, but we were unable to get to this until today. And uh, a couple of the sales are actually happening today that we're going to be talking about, but we'll go back and look at the prices later. If you're a collector of these things, you already know about the sale, and you're probably down there uh, getting ready to do some spending. All right. The other thing I wanted to mention was that Bonhams also has a sale this Wednesday in, um, in Edinburgh. Okay, uh, it's a, a, a an interesting sale, very eclectic, lots of chi uh, Chinese bronzes, porcelains, ivory carvings. If you live in the U.S., you can't ship the ivories in here very easily, um, but uh, they have other things. And uh, the estimates all seem pretty reasonable. So if you're if you're not shopping with an endless wallet, you might want to check that sale out. You still have time. All right, and on to this. This is the Indian Himalayan Southeast Asian art sale that's happening today. Um, and it includes a collection uh, from the Elizabeth and Willard Clark family. Okay, they were uh, famous collectors. And uh, there's some great examples in here. All right, and I want to get right over to them. Here's the catalog. Well, here's the list on, on the bottom site. And as you'll see, there are a lot of, this, this sale is heavy in two things, bronzes and tankas. They have some excellent examples of both um, in all price ranges, which is rather interesting, um, and which is one of the reasons I really like Bonhams is that they don't just throw in, you know, fifty and hundred thousand dollar pieces, you know, sort of their baseline. Um, they have things in here for a couple of thousand dollars, as a matter of fact. So you want to check it out uh, in the future, especially. And uh, we're going to scroll down here and take a look at a few of the things. One of the things is in here is a major ticket item, though. I wanted to, I do want to point that out. Here are some of the Tonkas, all right. But there is a bronze that's quite exceptional, this one. It's a big uh, Saki Yamani uh, Yamuni uh, Buddha. Uh, it's from the Kasamala um, culture, which uh, is long gone. And uh, this, is, this is it. It's a big one. It's over 20 inches. It's 20... Uh, 23 inches tall. And what's really interesting about this is that it's, well, first, it's superbly well cast. And if you take a look down here at the details, you see the way they did the folds of these robes. It's one of the things I always look to um, when I'm looking at bronze to see how well the caster was able to handle fabric and the folds of fabric. And the other thing is always the, uh, the face. Uh, the eyelids are heavy and thick, uh, nice full lips, nice bushy cheeks, full cheeks and so forth, and again, the textiles, um, and the, these beautiful ear uh, extensions here. Um, you know, the full face and all that, uh, sort of the exemplary life and uh, of, of a Buddhist. But what's really nice about this is the, uh, the base. It has its original base, which is, is quite unusual. Often you see these larger figures, especially from this time period, and the bases have been removed. All right, they weren't considered to be that interesting to keep, and they got banged around a lot. There's the back of it with its original red pigment, all right, and here's the front of it. And uh, this is a rather, rather unusual, it's a known type of base that they put on these where they added this extra uh, band at the bottom below the lotus uh, leaves as a decoration. Uh, it makes it quite unusual, very unusual. And I have these beautiful, beautifully done fingers and so forth going right up the piece. And there's the face. What a great face. That's a good face, let me tell you. And uh, it's estimated at um, $1.2 to $1.6 million. It's not for the faint of heart, but boy, what a great looking bronze, all right? And uh, on to this one. This is another one. This is the Mahachakra uh, uh, figure, uh, dancing figures, uh, beautifully gilded and uh, set with turquoise, precious stones. This piece is about eight inches tall. And it's estimated at 150 to 200,000. It's a very complex bronze, as you can tell. Um, these are these are uh, very complicated to do. Um, and look at the detail. When you get into these and really examine them, they are absolutely the workmanship is absolutely amazing. Especially look at the hair piece, the head piece. And here's another image of the uh, piece from another angle. The kissing figures. And then you have the multi-headed um, uh, man and all that. Okay and uh, multi-faced. And uh, again, a big estimate, but quite a thing. 
And then onto the stupas. This was one of my favorites. This was a devotional a stupa that was done. And it goes uh, goes along with the the, the, uh, the belief of the hundred thousand stupa donation to a local temple uh, to ensure good fortune and long lives for your family. And it's an illustration of your own devotion. But the quality of this stupa um, and the way this this particular example was done is just exceptional all the way down. I'm really going to pull this in. The brushwork, the decoration, all the figures, all the symbolism. I'm not an expert on stupas. I know a little bit about them. Um, but if you're a stupa fan, and look at the eyes. Just a fascinating piece all the way down. And it is inscribed from the family. Uh, the inscription is right here. All right. There's a nice long inscription, and it describes what temple it was given to, the date, the, you know, the time of the year, the celestial uh, moment, and all that. And uh, quite extraordinary, and it's estimated at two to three hundred thousand uh, uh, dollars. All right, but a beautiful example. And then you have this. This is a really unusual one. It almost looks Art Deco. It reminded me of of bronzes that were done by the American sculptor Paul Manship. You may know him. He did the Prometheus at Rockefeller Center. He was a, actually his studio was about a quarter mile from my house. He lived up here. But this reminded me of that very beautiful uh, figure uh, done during the Qing Dynasty, the early Qing Dynasty, but just great quality. And it's a, a nude of a female, you know, the feminine, uh, feminized version of Buddha is what it amounts to. But just beautifully done. Look at the feet, the curled feet and so forth. And uh, just a, a lovely piece. And uh, I think it'll do very, very well. And then moving on, it's estimated, I think, at about seven or 8,000, but it's a, I think it's just a terrific thing. I hope somebody loves it. And then on to this. This is the uh, schist figure of the Maitreya. This is a famous type. They were done in the third century in the Gandhara um, area, but powerfully, uh, powerfully uh, carved. And uh, this one is particularly well done. And uh, if you pull it in a little more, there it is. All right, you've seen these before, these, these dark shifts carving, very powerfully done, and, uh, but beautiful detail all the way down. All right, he's missing part of his hand, obviously, things like that. But again, the, the, the way the robes are carved, the folds of the robes, so forth. Here is his sleeve, the way that's done. Just exceptional carving, uh, beautiful quality. And uh, it is estimated at two to three hundred thousand. It's about twenty-four inches tall. Most of these figures like this tend to be that big, even bigger in some cases, but pretty typical. And it was done in the third century, so it's a nice old one. And then you had also the Chinese works of art sales taking place today. It's an interesting, also an interesting catalog. There's a lot of great stuff in here, and a lot of things that are buyable, like this. This is a, uh, a Kangxi period uh, bird's head ewer. Um, the head appears to be in good shape. It's a rather unusual type, and it's estimated just at four to six thousand dollars. All right, this is the kind of thing you, if you, if you collect and you don't feel ready to spend a fortune at Christie's, or Sotheby's, you can often go to Bonhams, and you can find some great things, and they are extremely knowledgeable. All right, they know what they're doing. All right. And uh, here's another piece here. This is from a collection. This is a, a beautiful uh, Shang Dynasty Gu form uh, vase. It's estimated at seventy to hundred thousand dollars, and uh, it's quite a thing. This is a nice one. These are always collectible. These have these have been collectible since bronzes became popular. This was an instant hit among Western collectors and Chinese collectors as well. They just love them. Beautiful form. This is a nice one. It has very good surface on it. And uh, happily, uh, Bonhams has jumped on the bandwagon too for the uh, enlargement abilities here. So you can really see, you can see where a tiny bit of the patina got knocked off over the years, which is not unusual. That sort of happens with these because it becomes flaky, that uh, copper, copper uh, oxidization. Here's a little bit more of it where it popped off. But a, a beautiful example, really nice. And then they also got this. Is the the Courier Museum in New Hampshire had some Chinese things, and for some reason they're deaccessioning. I assume they're on a you know on a fundraising mission of some kind. But they have this. This is a absolutely beautiful 12-inch uh, uh, Chinlung Markin period double gourd uh, vase. Um, the, fam the family that donated gave it to the gave it to the museum about 25 or so years ago, 26 years ago. And there it is. But this is a lovely example. You've seen these before. But they often don't have the stopper. This one actually has its original stopper, which makes it quite desirable. 
I would think. And uh, the mark is, of course, uh, perfectly well, you know, perfectly done as they always are on these. There it is. There's not much to say about that. And uh, it's estimated at 60 to 90,000, and it is 12 inches tall. Okay, so let's see how that does. They have some nice things from that the thing there, in that museum. And uh, then there was this. This is a really great thing. This is an infinite Buddha's pillar. It's carved out of limestone. It was done during the uh, Wei or the Qi dynasty, to the way to the Qi dynasty. And uh, here it is. We'll enlarge it. And you don't see these very often. This is a rather interesting thing. Um, and the estimate is in the uh, thirty or forty thousand dollar range, but uh, quite rare. And uh, it's in the round, so it's circular, so it could stand as a column. It's forty-two inches tall, but just beautiful quality. I, I like oddball things like this. This is sort of one of those oddball Asian things, Chinese things. Um, if you're a serious collector, though, um, it's something to you know to think about. It's estimated at twenty-five to forty thousand. There's the estimate. All right. And then over to this. This is nice. This is a nice big Kangxi vase. It's about 30 inches tall. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, 30 over 30 inches tall. Uh, a nice example. And uh, again, you can enlarge it and take a good look at it. And it has a very typical uh, Kangxi. It's just almost like a stock pattern for Kangxi vases. But if you're not in the position to spend, you know, uh, 30 to 50 or 300 thousand on a Kangxi vase, this is a great, great thing to have. I think so, anyway. And uh, be beautifully done with the is sort of the, the, the figures on the on the on the mules riding across the stone bridge. There's a big grasshopper in the bottom and the border, and all that. And there's a good uh, sh shot of the uh, of, of a detail of the piece. There it is. And you can enlarge that and get a good good close look at the uh, the brushwork and the quality of the work. Perfectly nice piece, and it's not crazily estimated. Six to eight thousand dollars. So somebody might get a good deal on that. All right. And then you have this. This is, some of you have seen these around. These are these inlaid archaistic bronzes that were done in the Qing dynasty, 18th, early 19th century. They became quite possible, popular, rather. Um, they've been inlaying bronzes with silver and gold, as you know, going way back um, thousands of years. But this is the, a, a rather interesting revival that took place with these. And uh, this is a nice one, and it's a big one. It's, I think it's 27 or 28 inches tall. It's a highly unusual size. And it has this uh, spectacularly done finial on top and has retained its original lid. You see these around sometimes, they don't have the lids. This one does. And the quality of the work, of the gilding, of the gold here and the silver, a lot of silver on this. Some of the silver is tarnished, but gold doesn't tarnish typically, so you can always see that. Uh, just a great example, right down to the base, beautiful quality, and it's estimated at twenty to thirty thousand. And it's it's a bit of money, but it, it doesn't sound crazy for this. This is a big piece, very unusual, twenty-seven inches tall. All right, and then move along over to this. Oh, we did that one. This one. This is another thing that uh, for somebody that doesn't have an endless wallet to spend, this is a very nice, I believe it's 14, 14 inch tall Ming Celadon vase. And you can blow it up here and get a good look at it. It's lovely quality, very typical of the you know, 15th, early 16th century pieces. Um, nice, nicely carved with these giant chrysanthemums running up the vines. And then these lappets around the base, and that's that's a Ming vase. That's very typical that iron red uh, from oxidizing in the kiln. Uh, nice example, and uh, you don't have to go. You know, you don't have to take out a loan necessarily to buy it. Um, it's estimated, as I said, at uh, twenty-five hundred to four thousand dollars, and it's good size. This is not a small vase. It measures fourteen inches tall, so that's 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 a that's a nice nice piece, I think anyway. And uh, then there's also this. It's a 19th century tea dust glaze vase, 13 inches tall. Has a chin lung mark on it, though they don't obviously don't think it is. Um, but here it is. Nice looking vase. Good deep color. Um, there's a slight there's a slight bit of irregularity here and there in the glaze, but it's okay. And uh, estimated four to six thousand dollars. Uh, which is not crazy because even marked 19th century pieces, uh, you know, you know, uh, Guangzhou pieces um, with a, with a rain mark on it. And this piece certainly is 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 Guangzhou or earlier. Um, routinely sell for 10 to 15 thousand. So here's a nice example, 
with a four to $6,000 estimate. Pretty good. And then we get on to this. This is the Maitri collection. This is a single owner sale. It was that. It belonged to a man who uh, was an American, apparently, who uh, moved to Japan for, uh, in business uh, many years ago and uh, began collecting. He and his wife were both fans of it. He had a very good eye. He caught on to it early, and he, he was in finance. I'm not sure what he did, but he must have done something pretty well because the, this is a very expensive collection to build. But uh, he has a great eye, and there's a nice introduction in the beginning of the catalog uh, about, about him and how he got into it. And if you uh, pop open the catalog and scroll ahead a little bit, you're going to realize that this, this, this guy collected phenomenal stuff really phenomenal figures and here are just some of them and we'll just uh, slide across them well we'll put that just get rid of that and just scroll through it um, and this sale uh, is taking place either tomorrow or Wednesday I forgot to check but there's some very early bronzes in here there's a very good write-up uh, Jane Casey did the write-up on, on the on these figures on early Mala period bronzes which are extremely rare this is one right here uh, beautiful patinas on these, often inlaid, very elegant. The, the Mala bronzes tend to be extremely elegant visually, um, like this, just spectacular, very, very warm, uh, just really lovely. There's another one. So you want to check it out, and there's lots of good Nepalese sculptures in here as well. Um, the estimates run anywhere from ten to 15,000 up into well into six figures. But it's a beautifully written catalog with lots of information in it. Okay, so you really want to go in here and uh, paw through this and enjoy the catalog. I was going to do this off the Bonhams website, but for some reason, none of the images are on there today. I don't know what happened. All right, but you have pieces like this, this beautiful copper, uh, copper figure, Nepal, 14th century. Uh, it's around, uh, how big is this thing? This thing isn't enormous at all, um, but it's estimated at uh, three to 500,000. It's eight inches tall. Uh, sort of that's sort of what sizes these come in all right they can be very small and extremely rare as, as you can see and here's another one here another really great Nepalese standing Buddha and on and on and on and on. just uh, just terrific all the way through all right there's also some good ritual pieces in here as I recall and uh, just great stuff all right so that's it so take a look, and uh, once these sales are over, we're going to go back and we'll pull out some of the highlights, and maybe point out we'll point out some of the things that really were were pretty good bargains, because those they do come up at these sales. They do have some good bargains, and uh, everybody later goes, "Oh, I wish I'd gone to that," but uh, we'll see. We'll see. Okay, and uh, thanks for visiting. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoy the videos, and uh, uh, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and come over to bitamount.com and get the new weekly newsletter, and. Um, which is free, and uh, join us. All right. Thanks so much for watching. See you all next time. Bye-bye.